Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to be back here on the re-report. Been out the last few days taking care of some things, but um, I do miss giving you guys updates, giving you my perspective on the Carolina Panthers. So I'm back here today, and, uh, you know, the Panthers have their first preseason game this Saturday against uh, Washington Commanders, previously known as the Washington football team. Uh, before that, they were the Washington Redskins, which is what led to the name change. But before that, they were the Boston Redskins. And before that, they were the Boston Braves. You didn't need to know any of that. But I was curious, so I looked it up for you. And you never have to wonder again. But <laughs> nothing to do with the actual video. So let's get into the actual video. So we're here today to talk about an article written by Darren Gannett, Darren Gannett, uh, talking about uh, the Panthers two weeks in Spartanburg, South Carolina during training camp. That's right. Training camp has wrapped up and, uh, you know, he just decided to give his takeaway from the situation. And I thought I would give the article a read and also give my take on um what he was talking about in the article and you know because obviously i'm not there personally so i decided to just give this article a read another article reaction so let's see uh without further ado what he had to say uh, the article starts off by saying uh there's still a lot of preseason to go and some of the most important work is coming next week when the panthers line up with the patriots for a pair of joint practices but with 13 practices in Spartanburg in the books, there are a few patterns emerging and a few things we can safely say we've learned about the Panthers. Here's a look at what stood out over the last two and a half weeks. First and foremost, this is, the, this is a more powerful football team than it was a year ago in a few key areas. See? We tricked you by not starting with the quarterbacks. We'll get there. We promise. Uh, yeah, um, being a more powerful football team, in my opinion, I, uh, I, I've I gotten that impression. That's the impression I've gotten from the Panthers um, as I've followed these articles from, uh, you know, the people who are there, you know, also uh, David Newton, who's been at the training camps. And from the video footage I've seen, definitely the impression I've gotten from the Panthers uh, while watching them. They are a much powerful team than they were a year ago. Uh, article goes on to say, the offensive line has more quality players than it did last year when they were pulling guys off the streets to be, to be able to play uh, some games late in the season. That could be one of the most significant differences in the results of the team as a whole this year. Uh, when your offensive line was as bad as the Panthers uh, was last season, you really got nowhere to go but up. So definitely, definitely uh, great to uh, good to hear this and really no surprise because they were a bad uh, line last year. And if you come back uh, just as bad or even worse, then somebody's not doing their job. Uh, first round pick. Uh, Ikem Ikwanu was drafted to play left tackle and he will and he will though he's less than three weeks into his first camp he still got some technical things to either uh, learn or iron out but when they're in pads you notice the difference when he's on the field he moves people and that's the job it also appears that right guard Austin Corbett and right tackle Taylor Moten are becoming a very good side, a very good side of the line together. They're, they're a well-matched pair, and Matt Rule just declared Moten his camp MVP. Ooh, that's big. Saying he has taken the next step to becoming uh, the dominant player he's capable of, and his leadership is being felt. 
high praise from the coach uh, to this. Uh, definitely something we will be looking at, you know, um, because of this high praise. This is definitely something the offensive line will be looking at uh, come Saturday when they play the Commanders. So that's definitely cool to hear. Article uh, continues uh, and says there's still some sorting out to do at other spots. Uh, Michael. Michael Jordan. I didn't know he came out of retirement to play football. Nice. Michael Jordan was claimed off waivers in September, started 10 games for them last year and was uh, capable at times. They're probably not going to claim a 10 game starter off waivers this year. Once Iquanu uh, firms up a starting job, Brady Christensen seems headed to left guard. The center competition continues while Pat Elfine was often overmatched at guard. He's much, he's much better in the middle with the kind of NA phone booth strength and former wrestler leverage that serves him well. He's the more athletic option while Brady Bozeman is stronger, but a little less mobile, okay? Uh, they also have a couple of young players in Deontay Brown and Cade Mays who have, who have flashed in camp. The massive Brown also has the gift of moving people while Mays looks like he's a guy who could eventually become a starter in a year or two, in, a, in year two or three. And he has the ability to play four positions now, which helps. There, That's a lot of words, but they have a lot more people this year. Always good to hear a lot more people. Uh, they needed them. The offensive line is the single biggest difference in this year's roster, and they spent resources there for a reason, definitely for a reason. But the addition of the bulk is a theme at a few other positions which could benefit them. Again, positive to hear because we know how bad it was last season. We can look at the Bengals and we can credit them for accomplishing all that they did uh, with the terrible O-line they had last season, but you can't hope to always get by by having um, by having horrible quarterback protection. Uh, the Bengals were the exception last year, and even 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 then they couldn't cap it off because they allowed their quarterback to get sacked uh, seven times, and he was hit eleven times in the Super Bowl. So. Definitely great to hear about this improvement from the offensive line. Now they just have to go out there and execute. Uh, Damian Wilson is a bigger middle linebacker uh, than they've had in recent memory, which fits well with some defensive tweaking. Last year, defense was built for speed and it was fast. It was also some skeptical to the run. Wilson helps and if if uh, Yetor Gross Matos takes the next step, <laughs> It would definitely help stabilize the run defense. Adding running back Deontay Foreman, I remember this guy, I think I picked him up fantasy last year when he played for the Titans. Uh, adding running back Deontay Foreman also lends some uh, some help to the offense, some heft, it says heft, not help or left, it says heft to the offense, giving them a legitimate short yardage back. The rest of the backfield is full of sprinters and Foreman isn't slow, but he's looking like a guy you can hand hand it to on third and one with a better chance of uh, with a better chance of better blocking, the better chance of better blocking in front of him too. Okay, uh, a big short yard back in the backfield um, on third down, especially on third and one, third and short. With CMC also lined up in the backfield, uh, I, I believe, you know, when we talked about innovativeness, that there is definitely switching things up and, and confusing the defense in terms of what the Panthers are about to do. And I know he hasn't been announced yet, but as a QB1, as a starting quarterback, Baker isn't a slow guy uh, either. So his potential to take off of that first down uh, is definitely a threat that the... Uh, that'll keep the defense on their toes so they can definitely switch things up now. Uh, article goes on to say, okay, you've been patient. We'll do quarterbacks now. Uh, early in camp, Sam Darnold was the more consistent of the two because he had more exposure to the offense, but with every passing day, 
his four month head start becomes less of an advantage. Ooh, we knew this was coming though. We knew you was not going to keep Baker down forever. Uh, Baker Mayfield has gotten progressively better as camp going on, as, as, camp, uh, as camp has gone on. He still, he still take chances, and if he starts, he will throw picks. People sometimes forget, but Jake DeLone threw a lot of picks too, but Mayfield is also making plays downfield on a more consistent basis. Now, a Jake DeLone mentioned in the article, one of my favorite Panthers of all times, uh, but again, it's, it's, it's true. Jake DeLone does throw, he did throw picks. Even in his best year, like I was watching the Bears Panthers 2005 divisional uh, round game the other day. He threw one pick, but Jake had some picks there, some picks in 08. And these are seasons where he helped lead us to the playoffs and to uh, conference championships. And he once led the Panthers to the Super Bowl, but he did throw interceptions. Uh, Baker, you know, he's going to throw interceptions. And yes, when he does, we know the media and all of his critics are going to celebrate, celebrate it like it was their Super Bowl. Baker threw an interception. That's their version of, that's what they celebrate. We, know, we already know as soon as he throw an interception, that's what it's going to be like. Our article goes on to say, Rule has mentioned several times in camp uh, that only 12 teams played the same quarterback in all 17 games last year. So the number tells us they need both of them at some point. They will need both of them at some point. And when both quarterbacks got their sides into the end zone, on a 30 seconds from the 30, need a touchdown to uh, to win Drill Tuesday. It was encouraging. Darnold has made some big plays too, but over uh, the four year uh, over the four year span of their careers, Mayfield has objectively been the better of the two. So not uh, hyperventilating over August reps would probably be wise. Definitely. Uh, Of course, you know, you, you you don't want to exaggerate over August, things that happen in August, and not even, you know, when we see preseason games, you don't want to exaggerate things, but it's a step-by-step -step process, and it gives us an idea of what we need to know and where we're at. So we're going to applaud it and appreciate it accordingly and criticize it accordingly as well, if it needs criticism. Uh, article goes on to say also Matt Corral uh, throws a really nice ball once he learns how to play in the NFL he could be good he's still learning how to play in the NFL though if he has time and stability around him you could see him starting in the lead at some point that is very key on what the article said about Corral uh, time and stability time and stability think about how many qbs or just players in general failed to make it in the league because they didn't have time and stability in an organization uh who stands out to you leave a comment to let me know who stands out to you when you think about a stability you think about tim duncan in basketball and in football i think of brady of course brady had stability he had time but in terms of someone who have, who, uh, you know, who didn't jump out immediately, but eventually got going and could have very well winded up as a guy who we would have never seen at his full potential was Alex Smith. That's the guy I think about. We couldn't get a good gauge on him until Harbaugh arrived. Then we knew exactly what type of QB he was. Game manager, sure. He was not Brady, he was not Rodgers, he was not, he was not Breeze. But we didn't know that until he was surrounded with stability. And that's what Harbaugh and Andy Reid provided uh, for a guy like um, Alex Smith. Uh, if there is a quiet standout in camp, it has to it 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 has been safety Xavier Woods. He brings a maturity to a young secondary because he knows how to communicate across the defense, but he's not just talking, he's making plays. Having him back there will also allow them a little more freedom to do things with Jeremy Chen. Woods didn't get 
the most attention among some offseason acquisitions, but he could yield some of the biggest rewards. Um, no, no, uh, our offense is going to have to match what our defense is about to do. I think this Panthers defense is, you know, they're about to be all time. They're about to be a really great defense. Of course, they have to stay healthy, but they are. Our article goes on to say uh, Christian McCaffrey, good football player. CJ Henderson, always talented, getting better at football. JC Horn, good at football, bad at trying to uh, sneak his way into more reps than they want him to take. To adopt the popular slang of the young people, he has a dog inside of him or something. That's what um, Darren in that said just stick to the old school slang in that uh this article also talks about the defensive line and the shortage of tight ends but i didn't want to take up too much more of your time because i've taken up enough uh this is not the fan this is not fan service for what i'm about to say but everyone is going to sleep on this team this year hell everyone might even snore on us that's fine but this team has the potential to succeed and go far. It's just about putting it together and being innovative on offense. Defense, I'm not so worried about. I think they'll be at the at a top five again this season. They were number two overall last season. Baker is a guy who I believe will elevate uh, these receivers. I know CMC loves this because this takes a lot off his plate. He doesn't need to be uh, the team leader in rush and receiving yards. So definitely some great things I'm reading coming out of Panthers camp. But now it's all a matter of executing. And that starts this Saturday against a team that spent the last two seasons without a name. Leave a comment, ask a question, subscribe, and hear me out. When people see this, they're going to say, well, he really wasn't a nice guy. He may have been a tyrant. Well, that's because you never won anything. I wanted to win, but I wanted them to win and be a part of that as well. Look, I'm only doing this because it is who I am. That's the way I played the game. That was my mentality. And if you don't want to play that way, then don't play that way. Break.